Hello everyone. So we are going to start the drawing. The first part of the drawing it has been already covered in our class. So here, from this unit, we are going to cover types of the different equipments which are employed in the drawing and few of the derivations. So you see, as we have already discussed in our previous class regarding the transfer of heat, right? The work done or the heat. So we have come to the this equation that dw by dt it is equal to q by lambda right that is a heat and latent heat that is equal to k prime a hs minus hg now you see the overall rate of heat transfer now can be expressed this overall rate of heat transfer now can be expressed as a sum of heat transfer by conduction convection and the radiation as we have already discussed this three type of heat transfer techniques earlier so here the qk it stands for the heat transfer due to the conduction qc it is the heat transfer due to the convection and qr it is the heat transfer due to the radiation so instead of the small q you can take it as a summation right so thus you see the rate of drying it can be exhilarated either increasing any one of this any individual of this either you can increase the rate of conduction heat conduction or you can increase the rate of convention or you can increase the rate of radiation by increasing this definitely the rate of drying will be enhanced so you see the heat it must be transferred to the material to be dried in order to supply the latent heat required to remove the moisture you know that right so what actually happens what we have discussed earlier that the water it diffuses through the material to the surface right and subsequently it evaporated into the air stream thus you can say the drying process it involves as we have already stated it involves both the heat transfer as well as the mass transfer right so let us discuss different factors which affect the selection of dryers so if you work in a pharmaceutical industry if you need to select a type of dryer to be used for drying a particular material what are the factors which affects the selection of dryer first of all you see properties of the material being handled so what are the properties first of all physical characteristics of the material when it is dry you need to first determine the physical characteristic of the material when it is dry whether it is sticky whether it is amorphous whether it is crystalline or whatever right next physical characteristic when it is wet when the material is wet what is the physical characteristic of the material that you have to this means know before selecting the type of the dryer you are going to use next is the corrosiveness of the material whether your material is corrosive or non-corrosive right then regarding the toxicity you need to know whether it is toxic or not and regarding the flammability if it is highly inflammable then you should not expose your material to high heating dryers because high heating dryers may induce the heat which and your material can immediately catch up the fire moreover the particle size if the particle size is less then you can use a less efficient type of dryer but if the particle size it is more or it is bigger then you have to use a efficient dryer next the abrasive of the material that you also need to check next drying characteristic of the material what is the drying characteristic of the material that first of all type of the moisture you need to know before selecting the dryer type of the bound unbound or both moisture it is means we have to determine whether bound moisture is present or unborn moisture is present or both moisture is present right next initial moisture content that we have to determine before selecting the dryer then final moisture content permissible drying temperature of the material it is not like that you have got some material and you are going to keep on increasing the height you should know the permissible heating or drying temperature you should not accept the permissible heating or drying temperature in order to keep the material safe next probable drying time for different type of dryer 
So some type of dryer can be used for a long while, where other type of dryer can be used for a short time. Other factors like flow of material to and from the dryer. So quantity to be handled per hour. If you have to handle more amount of the quantity, then your dryer should be efficient enough. Next is the type of the operation. Whether you are performing a batch operation or a continuous operation. Moreover, process prior to the drying. Any process you need to perform, that will determine the selection of the dryer. And process subsequent to drying means other process which, which you are going to apply after the drying. Right? Next, product qualities. So, shrinkage, it is one of the qualities. You, you have to see whether your product means it is going to get shrink if it is going to shrink you have to change the type of the dryer regarding the contamination you have to take very cautious step uniformity of the final moisture content uniform moisture content should be there right decomposition of the product that is a important thing decomposition of the product you have to keep consideration because decomposition of the product lead to a useless pharmaceutical material which cannot be used further rate of subdivision product temperature and bulk density is all thing you need to determine before selecting a dryer next recovery problem so regarding the recovery problem first of all you need to determine the dust recovery what is the amount of the dust it going to get recovered the solvent recovery if you need to recover the solvent then the selection of the dryer to be done precisely and facility available at the site of installation so first of all this is very important space if you are having a bigger space then you can use a bigger type of dryer next is the temperature what is the temperature of the station where you are going to fit your dryer or what is the temperature your dryer can produce at the maximum humidity you have to check at the chamber as well as at the room cleanliness of the air which is available for the dryer availability of the fuels as well as availability of the electric power source of the wet fit moreover permissible noise vibration dust heat losses and exhaust gas outlets these all are actually physical attributes that you have to take in care of while selecting the dryer so the classification of the dryer the dryers actually they are classified into different types so you see for solid for granules the granules can be dried either by convection conduction or radiation for convection you can do it in a batch process or continuous process for batch process you can use tray dryer or fbd abilities free dice bed dryer for continuous process you can use tunnel dryer belt conveyor dryer rotary dryer or turbo dryer for conduction it can you can also perform the conduction in two process as batch process as well as the continuous process the, in the batch process you can use the vacuum oven freeze dye in the freeze dye we use generally the lyophilizer and in the continuous process we use a pneumatic dryer for radiation drying you can use the ir lamps for paste or sludges that is the semi-solid type of things you can use a agitator dryer that can that is also divided into a vacuum and atmospheric dryer moreover for solution you can use convection and conduction conduction in the convection we can use the rotary dryer conveyor or tunnel and in the conduction we use the drum dryer pan dryer rotary dryer and spray dryer these are the different types of dryer which are actually employed in the pharmaceutical industry right so list of the different equipments which are used for drying we have had numerous equipments which are used which are actually the drum dryer spray dryer free dyes bed dryer it's also known as the fbd then we have the tray dryer tunnel dryer vacuum dryer microwave and we have the radiant heat dryer which is also known as the infrared dryer we have the rotary dryer and the freeze dryer so let's take example of few of the equipment first of all the equipment it is the drum dryer it is also known as the roller dryer or film dryer so what is the principle simple principle is that in the drum dryer actually heated this is a cylinder huh? this is a cylinder a heated hollow cylindrical drum is rotated in a longitudinal axis right this drum it is dipped in the solution 
this drum it is dripped in a solution which is meant for drying right this solution it is carried while it will move while the drum is move a layer of the solution will get stick to it right so it, it will form a film on the surface of the dryer and dry it to form the layer the dried material is finally removed the help of a knife so this is the basic principle so if you see the construction it consists of a hollow mounted steel drum that size of the drum it is 0 0.6 to 3 meter diameter in uh, the size and 0 0.6 to 4 meter in length right below the drum the feed pen this is the feed pen the feed pen is fitted actually in such a way that the drum it get dipped it get dipped partially into the feed right one side of the drum in the one side we have a spreader actually once the drum it will start moving once the drum it will start moving it will carry the feed along with right this spreader will do actually it will remove the excess of the feed and this spreader finally help to form a uniform layer of the drum right and there is also a knife side knife this knife will just remove after the drying this knife will remove the particles from the drum the storage bin is placed to collect the material so what actually takes place the steam is passed in, inside the drum right now this steam is carrying the latent heat right so the latent heat will heat the drum now the drum is rotated at 1 to 10 rotations per minute that is the speed of the drum the liquid which is present in the feed as i have already shown you it get adhered to the surface of the drum the material dries during the rotation of the drum and it is collected and stored in the bin by the use of the doctor's knife you can say simply knife or a surgical knife one thing you have to note that the drying process in the drum there it completes in less than one cycle so the time of contact of the material with the drum is only 6 to 15 seconds I will show you see here it has already dried so till it reaches here till your solution it form after forming a layer it reaches here it start it get dried so it remain for a very small time over the surface of the drum right because if it lay, remain over the surface of the drum for a long time what will happen the property of the material may get distorted right so uses so drum dryer it is used for drying solution slurries suspension moreover the milk product starch product and different type of suspension of zinc oxide kaolin etc even insecticides uh, they can be also dried with this drum dryer right now advantage in the drum dryer it is that the time consumption it is very less first of all moreover it occupies very less space as it is a compact in size and as a thin film of the liquid is formed on the large heating surface the rate of heat transfer in the drum dryer is very high right or you can say in the roller dryer it is very high and a product obtained is completely dry as it is the final form but you have some disadvantage also what are the disadvantages first of all maintenance cost it is very high moreover you need a skilled operator for performing this operation because every time you have to check the feed rate film thickness every time you have to check if the feed rate is more then you cannot get a uniform film over the drum right if the rotation is more you cannot get a uniform film over the drum more about the temperature and it is not suitable for solution of the salts with the less solubility clear the next step it is the tray dryer. Tray dryer it is a very simple equipment. It is also present in our premises. Here you see we have tray. These are the tray where you can feed the substance which we want to dry. Here we have a inlet for the air. Right from this inlet the air comes. Here you have a heating chamber. Here you will have a heater. This heater will heat up the air this heat air inlet air will come here there will be a fan this fan will rotate the air in this particular direction you see in this particular direction by the i have shown with the help of the arrow 
so it will move in this particular direction and by virtue of which it will get dried up so principle is simple that is in the tray dryer the hot air it is continuously pass over the weight mass so heat transfer takes place by the force convention and the construction it is very simple it is a rectangular chamber whose wall is insulated you should remember that the wall of the tray dryer it is always insulated so the trays they are placed in the chamber according to the need working so the wet solid they are placed over the tray as i have already told you the fresh air it is introduced by the inlet the hot air it is circulated by means of the fan which is present here at a rate of 2 to 5 meter per second right so the water is picked up whatever the water is present here it will picked up it will get picked up because heater is present here right this heater will heat the air as well as the substance present here so once the heater it start functioning this substance they will release the moisture this moist air will be taken up by the moving or circulating air right the heater it will heat up the air as well as the substance which are kept in the tray so during the cycle of drying it has been found that 10 to 20 percent of the fresh air it is introduced here but and remaining 80 to 90 percent of the air it is circulated back done uses so trade air can be used for drying the sticky material like sticky material plastic substance granular mass crystalline materials precipitate everything right drug chemical powder whatever everything you can use so advantages of the trade air in trade air handling of the material can be done without any losses because you have the tray just there you need to place the substance which we want to dry moreover you can perform the batch wise drying of substances here each base of the material can be handled separately every time right moreover the basis of the sizes in the pharmaceutical industry are relatively small so it is a very perfect instrument for that and the same equipment is readily adjusted for use in drying a wide variety of material this tray dryer can be used for a wide variety of material and very valuable products can be handled efficiently but there is a disadvantage of this instrument that is it is time consuming because you need time to or labor to every time to load and unload the material which we want to try the next type it is the tunnel dryer the tunnel dryer it is the same as that of your tray dryer but the difference is that in the tunnel dryer each tray these are the trays right as we have already discussed in the earlier one these are the tray right each tray they are fitted with some wheels so they are generally moving or they are generally allowed to move in a direction here the air it is moving and in the direction as shown by the arrow so while moving only the substance it gets dried up here so it is a continuous process so this dry it is a variant of the trader as i already told you so here trucks are loaded these are the trucks or you can say these are the tree loaded with the weight material at one end of the tunnel right this tunnel is comprised of a number of units which are electrostatically con controlled the movement are electrostatically controlled the movement of each truck they are electrostatically controlled right the solid it gets dried and a product is discharged at the other end from one end you can put the weight mass right it will pass that or it will transverse the part while transversing the part it will get heated as well as the circulation of the air will be there this circulation for here i have shown this is the source of circulation of air this circulated air will remove the moisture from the weighted substance and finally the feed it gets dried up so thank you everyone for your patience sharing i hope you like the video you can share this video with your classmates and colleagues and for further notification from this channel you can subscribe my channel thank you once again